What's up guys, it's Sydney and this is your 20 minute deep stretch. No equipment needed, so grab your mat and let's get started. What's up guys, thank you for taking the time to be here for this 20 minute stretch. We're gonna hit head to toe, all the muscles of your body, so if you're sore, if you're stiff, or if you're just taking care of yourself on this recovery day, I'm so proud of you. All right, make sure before you head out today, you do a couple things for me. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and also check out everything that's going on in the description of the video. I'll be doing meet and greets this summer. I've got merchandise coming soon. Lots of great things happening in the Sydney squad, so make sure you check all that out. Just take a minute as soon as you're done. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, big deep breath in. There we go, it's all about recovery today. Okay, we're gonna start with the upper body. I want you to take your left hand up beside your head. Grab it with your right, and you're gonna pull over in two, one, here we go. I want you to keep your spine straight, but I want you to kind of release that top shoulder for me. Starting with this position so you can make sure you're opening up your lungs. Great job, and let's go ahead and switch arms, come back up to the top. Pull the other arm over to the other side. Again, make sure your chest is open. You feel that stretch all the way down the side of your body. Great job. And bring your left arm across your body now. Push that over across your body with your right hand. Trying to keep your chest nice and straight. Spend a little bit of time today on the upper body and then move down to the hips and the core and the glutes. And then we'll finish off with quads, hamstrings, and calves and feet. A little bit of feet action. Okay, let's go ahead and switch it over. Take that opposite arm over. This one might look a little strange because I'm trying not to hit my mic, but same thing as the other side. So right now we're working on just shoulder and triceps. Good, go ahead and release your hands. Let's actually open up the shoulders the other way. So link your fingers behind your back, push down and back as you pull your back muscles together and spread your shoulders out nice and wide. There you go. I want you to keep your fingers laced together and go ahead and bend forward just a little bit. If you need to keep your hands resting on your tailbone, that's fine. But bend forward as much as you can and then try to release your hands from your back. So you do get a little bit of shoulder stretch in this way. You can let your arms fall as much as it feels comfortable to let them fall. Relax your neck, relax your head. And bring your hands back down to your tailbone for me. And go ahead and release them down to your sides and come on down to your hands and knees for me. I'm gonna stretch out your forearms now. Okay, so turn your fingers back towards your knees or just a little bit slanted outward. Okay, so you can push your elbows backwards. Okay, so let your elbows sink back away from your wrists and you should feel that stretch all in the top part of your arm. Rock back up for just a second. And let's sit back again. Let your elbows float back. If you're double jointed, this might look a little weird like me, so I'm sorry if this grosses you out. <laughs> it always grosses Dustin out, so I'm sorry to anyone this is not a cute look for. <laughs> All right, come back up, and now I want you to flip your hands over just on the right arm, okay? I want you to still support yourself with this arm but just slowly sink back again. Okay, we're just gonna stretch out the wrist here a little bit. A lot of times when we do things like push-ups or mountain climbers, our wrists aren't as mobile as we might need them to be. 
so it can get a little bit sore after that. Make sure you're not putting a ton of weight on this arm, but you're just kind of flexing that wrist joint a little bit back and forth just to work on your mobility. All right, good. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the other hand. Flip your fingers down so your palm is facing up and just slightly lean back. You might find one of the wrists feels a little bit better than the other one. One's a little tighter. So don't put too much pressure on it, just a little flexion. Great job. All right, let's release. And now I just want you to give me a couple wrist circles, slow and steady. Just working on that wrist mobility a little bit. And this also helps out for things like front squats when you're holding dumbbells up at your chest here. Okay, push-ups where you're on your hands. There you go. All right, let's try and stretch out your triceps a little bit here. I want you to hook your elbows down on the ground. I want you to walk your knees back and then dip your head down towards the, um, the mat for me. And then pull your hands back right over your head. So you've got as much of a bend in your elbows as you can. And you're putting a little pressure down towards the mat. Great job. Push just a little bit further down towards the mat, pushing your shoulders down towards the mat. Keep your elbows bent. And great job. Go ahead and release your arms out straight. And let's take the left arm and tuck it right underneath your body, using your right arm to push into the mat. So you feel that stretch right in the middle of your back. Good job. So we're moving down the body just a little bit here. Good, all right, let's come on back up to the center and just switch arms. So you're taking opposite arm, shoot it under your body, drop your shoulder down and then use this top arm Top hand to push into your mat, rotating that upper and middle spine really good. And just kind of let your head relax. Three, two, one, and come back up into tabletop position. All right, let's turn the fingertips out so they're facing away. And I want you to push that upper middle back up into the sky. Releasing your shoulder blades, separating them from your spine. And relax. Lift your chin up for just a second. And tuck your chin back down. Lift your shoulder blades and middle back up, up, up. Think about trying to get your shoulder blades as far away from each other as you can. And drop the chest down to the floor. Lift your chin. And let's go one more time. Tuck your chin, lift the upper back up. Great job, stretch, stretch, stretch. And good, come back to neutral. And now I want you to separate your knees just a little bit so they're almost to the edges of your mat, okay? Taking your hands nice and wide, we're gonna try and hit the chest here, okay? So nice wide hands and I want you to shoot your elbows straight out to the side, going chest down towards the mat. Okay, and what I want you to do is put a little pressure in the floor so your shoulder blades kind of press against your back, pushing your chest down. There you go, look up if you can. And 
Come on back up. All right, turn your hands out and let's do that one more time. Dropping the elbows straight out to the side, chest to the ground. Really pushing your elbows away, chest down, down, down. Two, one, and go ahead and sit back right over your calves, walking your hands out front. Ah, great job. Let's walk your fingers out as far away as you can. You guys doing okay? Feeling good here? I hope you said yes. I love this pose. You can really feel it for me, opening up your upper back. Great job. All right, let's come on up back to your hands and knees. This will kind of be our starting point for each of the next couple positions. I want you to tuck your toes down onto the mat, shifting your hips up into the sky. And I want you to bend one leg, shifting your weight to the other side. And what we're working on here is a little bit of glute and low back. Okay, so just let your hips kind of fall over to the other side. And keep your gaze right between your thumbs. Okay, so weight shifts over to the straight leg. Let's go one more, shift it over to the side, let your ribs open up. Good, and widen your feet out, turning your toes out about 45 degrees. I want you to walk it into your toes and grab onto your elbows. Okay, I've got your feet turned out so you've got a nice balanced stance here. I want you to dangle your head between your locked elbows, or between your two elbows, you're holding onto your elbows. Slight bend in the knee, and just let your spine relax here. Now release your hands, and I want you to grab onto the outside of your right foot, pulling yourself over to the outside of your right knee. Think about getting your nose over to your knee. and slowly walk it over to the other side. Same thing, grab onto your foot, nose to knee, or as close as you can get. And come back into the middle. Walk out just about halfway, and bring your feet together now. Okay, driving your heels down, I want you to walk back as far as you can with your heels down and your legs straight. Okay, if you can get to your feet, that's fine. If you're still out here, you can't get back any further, that's fine too, as long as you feel a stretch from your heel all the way up to your butt. Okay, as close as you can get. This is a stretch we overlook often. Just a good old hamstring stretch. We don't stretch the back of our bodies enough. All right, walk out just a little bit further so you're in kind of a pike position. All right, and I want you to swing left leg up beside left arm. Okay, drop the back knee down and release your foot. And we'll switch over to the front of the body here for a second. Okay, so facing your hips towards the floor, let's push the knee out just a little bit, just where it feels safe. And your hips down. Try not to let your chest rotate too much, keep it pretty straight. Good, and let's push it back, back, back over that back knee, shifting your hips back and straightening your front leg. You're doing great, guys. I know I'm making you move around a lot, but I want you to feel better when we're done here. Okay, 
And good, you might shift it back up front. Dropping down a little bit more, and this time keep your knee in, chest is tall, hips are low. You can lift your chin if you are able. And tuck your chin back down, push it back, hip over your knee, and straighten out your front leg. You're doing great. Bring it back in, and I want you to connect to both knees again. Let's shift it over to the other side, okay? So weight comes back up, your back knee is down, back foot is flat, shifting your hips down, and I want you to press your knee out and away from your body up front. Great job, just opening up the hips here. Put some pressure in the floor with your hands, and now let's push your hips back over that back knee, straightening your front leg. I want you to feel this in the front leg, the hamstring and the calf. Sometimes when you don't even realize it, your body needs this feeling. I promise we all are probably guilty of under-recovering, okay, if that's a word. All right, shift it back up to the top. Keep your knee nice and close and drop your hips nice and low. If you can, lift your chin up away from your chest. Look into the ceiling. Good, big deep breath. And let's come back in again to the hands and knees. Okay, I want you to reach back, grab onto your left leg, and shift your weight forward. Okay, a little quad stretch here. If you don't feel comfortable with this, you can bring that front leg back up for support, okay? But let's just stretch the quad out a little bit here while we're on the ground. We'll do it while we stand too, but this gets nice and deep into that area of the quad close to the knee, and also up close to the hip, so the two points of attachment. Slowly release that foot. I know it's easy to let it slam. Just release it slow. And let's switch over to the other side. Same exact thing. Okay, grab onto your foot. I want you to pull the heel to the glute. And you'll feel it really good up near your hip and then also down near your knee. Pull too hard if you're dropping your hip as well. You'll notice if you drop your hip down a little bit, you'll feel it a little deeper. Good. Four, three, two, one. All right, relax that foot and take the other leg back with it. Now we're gonna drop both hips down, keeping your feet on the mat. Normally I'll tell you to go nice and wide, but I want you to keep them close on this one. Okay, so just about hip width apart. Open your chest up. Great job. All right, tuck your toes down and lift your hips. As you drive your heels down to the floor, I want you to walk back in. Great job. And let's slowly roll it up. And I want you to step forward with your left foot, driving that back heel down to the ground. Okay, go ahead and release your hands up by your ears. Okay, if you feel stable, you can go ahead and look up. Okay, if not, <laughs> sometimes I don't either. Just stay right here grounded. This just helps open up the whole front of the body here as you drop your heel down out back. My right heel, which is the one I'm stretching right now, is a little tighter just because of my injury. So if it looks like I'm really unstable, that's why. I'm working on it. 
just like we all are. All right, let's go ahead and shift it over to the other side. Dropping the other heel down to the floor. Lift your arms up so you can sink a little bit more forward while still keeping contact with this back heel in the floor. Lifting your chin if you can. And good, release your arms. Come back in the middle and I just want you to lift yourself up onto one toe at a time. Stretch out the arches of your foot and your ankles. And as we close out this stretch, I urge you to do this stretch more than one time, more than just today, but three times this week. And I promise your body will thank you for it, okay? As you step up the intensity in your training, go ahead and keep your feet going. I know what that feels like on your body, and I know that your body has to recover. Okay, so as the clock rolls down to zero, if you wanna repeat the stretch, I urge you to do it again. There is no limit, but I do urge you to continue your recovery and your mobility throughout this week. I do these stretches very much intending for you to keep using them, not just on a Sunday, but throughout the week. Maybe it's when you wake up for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, you have that time where you just sink into your own thoughts. You don't think about anything yet. Don't pick up your phone yet. You just stretch, you get your mind right, and then you approach your day. And then you tackle the things that you need to start with. Or maybe it's after you've gotten everyone to bed, you're ready for bed, you've wound down a little bit, and you just need to feel better before you hop into bed. You need to feel a little bit less tight. Post-workout, you can't get that cool down to really make you feel loose enough throw this in there. In all situations, it's going to make your body feel better and even more so your mind, okay? Because as your body feels better, your mind knows it, it recognizes it, and it's gonna operate better as well. So the whole package, it's always that case for me. I am hoping that you include these workouts and these stretches to make you a better person all around. Not just to say you did a workout with me, but to make your life better in general, okay? I do genuinely want that for you. And like I said in the intro, if you wouldn't care, make sure you subscribe to our channel. First, like the stretch if you feel a lot better right now, and then subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on your bell notifications. I'll shoot you an alert as I post all of your workouts this week. And also check out the Sydney Squad and our towels and all the good stuff I've got in the description below for you guys moving forward. I love you, thank you for being here, and thank you for doing this for your body.